Honoring our heritage doesn't mean slavishly sticking to old-fashioned ways, and our multicultural roots can nurture innovation. If that sounds a little bit abstract, then Chef Sylvester and I's Heritage Day-inspired menu will offer a practical and very tasty explanation. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today for Heritage Day, we're gonna do a few South African dishes with my twist on it. For starters, I'm gonna do a butternut pultong blue cheese salad. For my main course, I'm gonna do a chicken stew with mushu, uh, samp and beans. And for dessert, I'm gonna do an Indian vermicelli with my little twist on it. So for my butternut and blue cheese salad, I'm gonna do some caramelized onions, sauteed artichokes, sauteed mixed tomatoes, some butternut biltong, I'm gonna finish that with blue cheese, a bit of microgreens, and a balsamic sauce. I'm gonna cut my onion into petals. So, just like that, and then I'm gonna remove the bottom and the top. I'm just gonna grab some olive oil. It's gonna go into my preheated pan. So I'm just gonna put some onions in just to get some nice color on that. And you only wanna use the petals just for plating purposes. So just a few pieces straight in. I'm gonna do some artichokes. These are lightly pickled artichokes. If you have fresh artichokes, that's also fine, but the pickled artichokes also add a nice tangy flavor to the dish. You'll see I'm not gonna do too much of salad dressing because the blue cheese as well will we'll melt over all of this and make it nice and saucy. So I'm gonna do a little bit of the butternut in here as well. I'm just gonna mix that up to get some nice colors on the onions, on the artichokes, and on the butternut. I'm just gonna season this with my secret spice. It's a bit of dried chili, brown sugar, and dried garlic. Nice helping of that. I'm just gonna mix that up a little bit. I'm just gonna grab my bowl, and then I'm gonna start plating up my starter. I'm gonna add some of my lettuce to my bowl. Just gonna spread that out nicely. You can tear the lettuce up a bit. Heritage Day is all about family and the heritage of our country. I chose this salad because biltong, generally a snack that we would eat around watching the rugby or watching the soccer. Also, it's, it's a snack that's very versatile. At the last minute, what I wanna do, just before I get my stuff off, I wanna add some of my cherry tomatoes. So I got some nice green, red, and the yellow cherry tomatoes just to warm them up. I'm just gonna add a touch more of olive oil to that. See some nice colors in there, nice sweetness coming out from the artichokes. I'm gonna add some of my artichokes, cherry tomatoes and butternut over my salad now. If you want, you can put a little bit of cinnamon over that dish. You're gonna add the blue cheese while the dish is still nice and warm so it can kind of melt all over it. Also the flavors can infuse with the other items like the butternut, tomato, and the biltong on the dish. I'm just gonna roughly crumble that over. With the blue cheese, you're gonna put as much as you would like to put. Okay, I'm gonna just drizzle that with some balsamic vinegar. There we have it, our butternut, blue cheese, and biltong salad for heritage day. Next, I'm gonna start with my chicken stew and mushu. It is traditionally samp and beans, but being African, brought up in Durban, exposed to Zulu, the language, mushu, it's amazing to just say mushu. So I'm gonna start off by adding some of my dry spices for my stew, some bay leaves, some caraway seeds, some cinnamon. I'm gonna put in some olive oil, healthy option there. If you could, and I wish you could smell what's going on right now, it's all those amazing smells coming out of those dry spices, the bay leaf, the cinnamon, the caraway, the anise seeds. So just a bit of onions. And while that's going, I'm gonna put some of my carrots in there as well, just to, to blend that up. Whole cloves of ginger, whole cloves of garlic, straight into the pan. I'm gonna do some rosemary. Don't wanna add too much of rosemary. Rosemary is quite a potent uh, flavor and very strong herb as well. Nice helping of thyme straight into my pot there. I'm gonna just do a touch of tomato paste into that now. Not too much, just to bind my dish up. I'm gonna give that another quick stir. I don't want the chicken stew to be too rich in a tomato flavor, hence I'm not gonna add any other tomatoes to the dish. Just a bit of tomato paste for the acidity and also for the flavor of the tomato and also to assist with the thickening of the dish. I'm gonna add a few nice pieces of chicken just spread evenly throughout the dish. Just allow that to brown just a little bit. Some nice thighs, drumsticks. We know 
When you're cooking hearty meals like this, you, you really want to dig in, use your fingers to eat. So I'm going to put it, just a touch of chili powder to the dish, not too spicy. So just a slight sprinkle. I'm going to do a little bit of cumin to add that nice nutty flavor to the dish. A quick mix and then I'm going to add some chicken stock just to let the stew cook in that. You don't want to add too much of color onto the chicken. It is a stew, it's not a roast. We're just going to top it off with some chicken stock. Sprinkle some coriander, fresh coriander over there. And we're going to let that go for about 45 minutes. With the mushu, I've parboiled the samp, I've parboiled the beans already. It's generally a, quite a long process. You want to soak it first and then boil the samp, especially for about three to four hours. I'm going to start off with a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna do a, a bit of onions. I'm gonna start off by letting my onions go for about 30 to 40 seconds just to soften up a little bit. I'm just gonna add a little bit of my samp now. I'm not gonna add all of it. I'm, I'm doing this with a bit of a different cooking method here. Now I'm gonna add a bit of my chili powder. Just a little bit of that. Then I'm gonna add some of my tomato paste. Not too much as well. I don't want to kill the flavor of the sam and the sugar beans. I'm gonna give that a quick mix. I'm adding it in gradually, just so I get different layers of flavor as I add in the spices, the beans and, in, and the sam. I'm gonna add in the sugar beans with all of the, the liquid that I've boiled it in as well. So that's gonna go straight in there. Now I'm gonna add the rest of my sam to that. I'm gonna give it a quick stir again. I'm gonna just add a bit of chicken stock to that. You don't have to use chicken stock. You can keep the water from the beans and mix that up. We don't have to let this go for too long. Our chicken curry is doing really well. My mushu is almost done. The reason why I'm gonna add my petty pants last is I didn't wanna add it at the beginning because it was gonna to get too mushy. So we just want it al dente, soft to the touch, crisp to the taste. I'm gonna spread that out with a spoon and let that soak with that flavor. I'm just gonna clear down my ingredients and get ready for desserts now. Vomsili is an Italian pasta. South Africa, we get them a little bit more thin than a traditional vermicelli. It's a little bit thicker than spaghetti. I'm gonna add some of my, my vermicelli to my medium heat pot now. You really don't want the pot to be too hot because you're gonna get the burnt flavor because of all the liquids, thick liquids that we're putting into the pot. So I'm gonna go right ahead by putting a nice helping of vermicelli, spreading that around. So you want that not too much, depending on the size of your pot and how many people uh, you're cooking for. It's quite a rich dish. I'm gonna put some of my butter in, into that now. Not too much of butter, because the butter's literally there just to brown off the vermicelli. Okay, I'm gonna mix that up a little bit. You don't really have to worry about the vermicelli breaking up. You actually want it to be smaller pieces so when you eat it, it's, it's easier. And then straight into that, I'm gonna add a bit of my flaked almonds. Also, allowing that to brown with the butter a little bit. Some whole almonds. Just to add some texture to the dish. I'm gonna add some cardamom, also known as ilachi. Nice helping of that. So I'm gonna give that a quick mix as well. You can see it's browning really nicely there. I'm gonna add a touch of raisins to that. Also adding texture and flavor. The raisins soak up all the liquids. And when you bite into them, they literally just pop away. I'm gonna add a touch of brown sugar, not too much. Just about two or three tablespoons. And I'm gonna to top that up now with some coconut cream. And a little bit of almond milk. Because it's on a low heat, it's not gonna go for seven or eight minutes. So we're gonna let that go for about 10 to 15 minutes after I give it a quick stir. In the meantime, I'll finish off with my stew and my mushu. I'm just gonna finish off my chicken stew with some mint. I'm just gonna check my vermicelli to check if my pasta is nice and soft. So I'm gonna garnish my vermicelli in the pot. To garnish it, I have some uh, pansies. Just gonna sprinkle those over. And then I got some white chocolate soil. White chocolate's gonna melt straight into our coconut cream and almond milk, make the dish so much more rich than it already is, which is exactly what you want. And that's our Heritage Day meals for today. Ngyabonga kakulu and zopona ntambamu.